York! Agent York! York! Agent York! York! Agent York! Hey! Agent York! Agent York? Hey! <laughs> hey, Agent York. <sighs> You're Lise Clarkson. What's wrong? You're acting weird. Sorry, Patty, I'm fine now. More importantly, do these red seeds come from some kind of plant that grows around this area? I don't know. What do I look like, a botanist? This isn't your average backwoods town. The Clarkson's ego and control has been piercing the town's heart like a massive dinosaur bone. But over this past century... Time has been busy eroding the beast's power from within. And now, the very thing that once fortified this town is polluting it with putrid gas and rotten marrow. Zack, this is the point where it all collapses. Did you notice anything strange before your daddy went missing? Did he seem different from usual, or say things that didn't make sense? Nope. He was the same as always. We talked a lot. I reckon he was in a better mood than usual. Almost even too talkative. Zack, she's putting on a strong face, but it's clear that she's very worried. Let's try and cheer her up a bit. What's the best thing to say in times like these? You don't need to worry about me, Agent York. Let's just focus on the work we have left to do. Unfortunately, it looks like your parents disappearing is connected with this case somehow. Yeah, I know. Melvin seems to love you so much. It's hard for me to believe he would just disappear and leave you all alone. Something must be afoot here. I wish I could tell you I'm sure they're okay, even without any evidence. But I hate lies, Patty. I can't guarantee that they're safe. That's my honest opinion. I'm trying to prepare myself for it, but I want to hope that they're okay. Of course. Zack and I feel the same way, but if you happen to think of anything that might help, please let me know. Even the tiniest piece of information could end up coming in handy. Yeah, I understand. But I really don't know anything. I just feel like I know that Mama's okay somehow. Meaning? Even when we're apart, I can always tell how my Mama's feeling. You know, like how twins can sense each other's feelings? But that's it. I can't tell where she is or what she's doing. Besides, I'm just a kid. Can't really trust what I'm saying, can you? Zack, it seems like she and her mother possess some kind of secret bond. But we shouldn't try to force it out of her. Yes, you're exactly right. Let's just keep our eyes on her for now. So, what other movies have you seen on that sci-fi movie channel? What? That question again? What did I tell you? In this country, all dialogues... Okay, okay, I'll answer it. Um... I need to think of a movie that Schwarzenegger wasn't in. Hmm... Uh, oh, okay, I got one. It's a film about people who travel around the world in 80 days. I think it was a remake of an older one. They went to a bunch of different countries, and there was tons of CG, so it was fun to watch. It starred some kung fu guy and a British man. Sorry, but they didn't ask your beloved Arnold S. to be in this one. Around the World in 80 Days, 2004. Directed by Frank Karachi. Starring Jackie Chan and Steve Coogan. Unfortunately, Patty, it appears that you didn't watch this film closely enough. I did too. Then you must have been far too distracted. He's in it, Patty. In it? Who is? Wait, no, it can't be. That's right. Arnold S. is in that movie. You're lying! There's no way! 
way. I mean, he was already governor of California by the time that movie came out. You're exactly right. In October of 2003, he became the new governor of California, but he was still able to appear in the film since it was in a small enough capacity not to interfere with his governing duties. You can find him in the Istanbul segment. What? I sort of remember the Istanbul part, but the prince? The prince with the crazy hairdo? That's right. He played Prince Hoppy, a romantic with long hair, skilled at telling stories and playing the guitar. He was so in character. Even I didn't recognize him at first glance. Flawless makeup, hairstyling, costume design, and impeccable acting. I was speechless. I believe that entering the political world only allowed him to further widen his acting repertoire. His acting was always so realistic and full of presence. But then, he went and added elaborate technique on top of it. Perfection. Patty, I'm now convinced that you've been seduced by his charm without even realizing it. That's why you've been unconsciously seeking out films that he appears in. You don't need to feel embarrassed. It's a perfectly natural phenomenon. Yeah, yeah. Let's just get back to the investigation. Come on, please. You're right, Patty. This is no time for idle chatter. We have two important goals now. Solving this case and finding your daddy. Let's get back to work. No more chit-chat. You heard her, Zach. We need you to focus as well. Hey, Agent York. Yes? Is that... Sorry, never mind. I think I was just seeing things. There's a flat, evenly weighted stone here. I bet we could use this to score an amazing stone skipping record. Let's give it a try whenever we get some downtime. For now, we need to focus on this investigation, Zack. There's some decomposing cloth here. We saw the same type of cloth at the sugarcane plantation. They must have used that cloth when they transported Lisa's body. And who cares about mundane evidence like that? This isn't a case that can be solved by gathering the kind of evidence we'd need to submit to a court. The growth is all missing from this particular section. It wasn't just cut away. She used fire to burn it out. Everything was planned so meticulously as if she wanted to show this altar to someone. That's why Chuck ended up discovering it. This altar is covered in burn marks, but there's hardly any residue left. There's no way for me to tell what was burned here. I could send it home for analysis, but is that really necessary? It'll just end up giving Abrahams more busy work. More importantly, Zach, Someone who knew how to manipulate fire was behind all this. In other words, these roots prove that Lena was here. And that's enough for me. Zach, this is an ominous sign. Among all the different footprints here are a set made from engineer boots. Yes, I know, I know. He probably only made them when he came to inspect the scene. I'm sure that Patty and I left our own set of prints here, too. But how do you explain the set that's inside the yellow tape? These red seeds keep sticking out to me. But we need to figure out what's going on with this altar before we focus on anything else. Isn't that right, Zach? After Lise Clarkson was murdered, her body was put back together here. Just like how Galena's body was dismembered, then rearranged within the holding cell. Lena Doman and PJ's bodies were also blown to pieces in the end. Perhaps that's the nature of the curse that's taken hold of the Clarksons. What do you think, Zach? Is there any significance to these similarities? Hey! 
FBI! What the hell are you doing back here? You already solved the case, yeah? So go on! Get your ass out of town! Why do you think I solved the case? Shoot! Exactly how stupid are you, FBI? This is Luke Carre, remember? Every fella in town already knows that Professor Orr's the one behind all this shit. Hey, Chuck. Can you see the altar from there? I'd see the whole damn thing. Along with your stupid ass standing there, trying to act all smart and shit. You told me that the poacher's boat you were chasing disappeared around this area, correct? Yeah, that's what I said, all right. What, you forget already? If you're just gonna waste our tax dollars out here, least you can do is catch them goddamn poachers. Fucking FBI, go and make yourself useful for once in your damn life. Chuck, we don't chase down fishing boats. Unless it's a terrorist boat that plans to overthrow our government, that is. Huh, then stop acting all leery, like I ain't being truthful or whatever. I'm busy too, you know. So long, FBI. Zack, he just taught us what the true purpose of this altar is. It was built here so that the ritual could be watched from a boat in the bayou. What do you mean? They could have just walked out here. There's no reason why they had to watch it from a boat. The goddess of fertility, Patty. <laughs> the goddess of fertility. A fine name indeed. So much blood has been shed, yet you remain in this town. Surely you know why. Of course I do, Hoongan. My work here isn't finished yet. You know, I could really use one of your oracles right now. <laughs> You're more fun than I thought. Here's the oracle you ask for. Listen with your heart. Speak to the 17 comrades who saw the birth of New Orleans. Feel the holy Allah. The giant lady's finger points down toward your goal. The entrance to the forbidden. Poetic and graceful as ever, Hoongan. <laughs> Hoongan's oracles are leading us toward the core of this case. That's the one thing I'm sure of. But don't misunderstand, Zack. I'm not blindly following him. Follow my intuition. Metaphysical offender profiling. That's all there is to it. The 17 comrades must refer to some area that has 17 of the same thing in it. We may need to use history to figure this one out. After all, we need to find someone or something that saw the birth of New Orleans. And we can't just round up every last old person in town. Somewhere, there are 17 comrades who've survived for a very long time. 
The word comrade seems to suggest that they aren't inorganic objects such as buildings. Maybe they're statues made to look like living creatures or some other organic life form. Well, Zach, have you figured it out yet? That's not it, Zach. The 17 comrades must have survived for a shockingly long time. Remember, they were here to see the birth of New Orleans. The 17 comrades must refer to some area that has 17 of the same thing in it. We may need to use history to figure this one out. After all, we need to find someone or something that saw the birth of New Orleans. That's it, Zach. The French established the colony of La Nouvelle Orléans in 1718, just about 300 years ago. The only 17 comrades that would have been around back then are the 300-year-old oak trees along this road. A majestic road lined by oak trees. Come on, let's go ask these sages of Lucare for some help on our investigation. Zach, the holy Allah is a shockingly simple metaphor, especially considering the quality of the oracles we've received thus far. It seems as if Hungan's poetic muse is finally running dry. The great thing about us Americans is that we can recreate our homeland anywhere. We're happy to transport crunchy bacon across the deserts of Africa if we need to. That's what it means to be American, and this holy Allah is just another example of that. From the early days of the frontier era, they've been helping us Americans be what we've always meant to be. Hey Zach, if the Holy Allah needs to be filled, things must be dire. Imagine what would happen if the Holy Allah were to run dry. The townspeople would instantly face multiple serious problems. That's it. I never doubted you, Zach. The Holy Allah refers to a water tower. Specifically, that water tower with its Clarkson family crest. It must be hiding some sort of clue. Let's fill the ala and see what it yields. Zach, what do you think the giant lady's finger is? I'm at a loss. I never thought one of Hoongan's childish riddles would force me to think so hard. But, oh well. I'm sure that as we deal with the rest of the oracle, it'll reveal itself to us. Wh what Is there something on my face? Listen carefully, Patricia. As my skilled assistant, I trust you a great deal. So I want you to answer me honestly. Answer what? Do you have any idea where Melvin might have gone? No. He didn't seem to be acting or talking differently than usual? No. I don't think so. Okay. I believe your words. Zach, we have a lot of work to do. It feels like we're finally approaching the climax here. Thank you. 
Zack, do you sense that? These trees have watched over this land for the past 300 years. Long before the Clarksons built up their town, these trees were here. If they could speak, I wonder what they'd have to say about this case. Has there always been a different number of trees on each side? Yeah. I heard that by the time our town came along, there were only 17 left. A general from the South might have cut one down during the Civil War. Intriguing, Patty. Why did he cut one down? I don't know. Folks say he planted a red tree in its place. I don't know if that's true or not, though. Zack, the shape of these seeds. They look just like the ones we saw at Lisa's altar. Patty, it appears that legend about the red tree wasn't a total lie. The first tree is withered and gone, but the shells from its seeds remain. Perhaps that red tree left some descendants somewhere else. Zack, he seems to know something that we don't. Doesn't it seem like he's trying to guide us somewhere? Um, what? What's going on? Change of plans, Patty. Let's go on a little stroll with that Dalmatian.
Is this the red tree that General planted? No way! This is a maple tree. A maple tree? Then it shouldn't be red at this time of year. You're right. That's strange. A long time ago, my mama and daddy used to come here together a lot. They told me they used to go on dates here, back before I was born. Mama would make sandwiches, then they'd come here and eat them together. My mama was really pretty, you know. When I was a kid, I believed she was a real goddess. Under the boughs of a legendary tree that stayed red all year long, a small miracle was born. One man managed to win the heart of the most beautiful girl in the world, and they call him Melvin Woods. Looks like it's time to move on. What a fantastic guide we managed to find. He actually waited for us to finish talking before taking us on to the next spot.
Hey, Patty. How would you rate this creation? Not bad, I reckon. They made good use of its natural form while also pulling out the soul from within. The artificial color also looks pretty. You don't usually see this level of harmony. Something unnatural always ends up getting left behind. Zach, did you catch all that? She sounded just like the curator of an art gallery in New York. I think we may have just uncovered a new side of her. But unfortunately, I can't see anything artistic about it. Honestly, it looks insane to me. That's all I get from it. And there's no way that this is a descendant of the tree that the general planted. Appears that we've lost sight of our guide, Zack. Oh well, let's head back to the last tree.
Zack, we can't fall behind this time. We need to stick close to him. Appears that we've. Oh well. Let. Hey, Patty.
Zach, now this is interesting. It looks like a tree that you could find anywhere, yet it's also unlike any other, completely alien. And look how it's weaved its way into the landscape, almost like cancer cells invading a human body. You might not even notice it unless you're focused on finding it. And this feeling, as I gaze upon this tree, I can feel evil emotions rising out from within me. Why on earth did that Southern General bring this tree into this town? I promise to protect you from all the evil in our world. Do not touch this tree. Got that, Patty? Got it, Agent York. We successfully spoke with the 17 comrades. I feel like they showed us a side of nature that transcends the realms of human knowledge. Next up is the Holy Allah. According to the Oracle, the Holy Allah needs to be filled. We may be due for another childish puzzle soon, Zach. But that's okay. After all, we came all the way out here to the boondocks. Why not enjoy playing by their rules for a bit?
Hey, let's shout something out loud. Like what? Chocolate Sunday. Okay, sure. <gasps> Actually, never mind. This is stupid. Looks like a case of bad. Let's come back. Patty, what's that? That tree? Or the water tower? That thing I'm pointing at. That. Like I said, what? That thing. Right there, Patty. Just tell me what it is. How am I supposed to know which that you're referring to? Oh, you're goofing on me, ain't you? <laughs> hey, let's shout something out loud. Like what? Chocolate. This thing sure looks tall when you look at it up close. But why do they gotta build it up so high anyway? The height gives them the necessary pressure to pump the water out. Also, building it in a spot where anyone could easily access it would only create more problems. Problems? In a certain Missouri town, they built the water tower low enough that a person could easily climb up to it. And that's exactly where a mass murderer decided to hide the bodies of all his victims. The water tower was so low to the ground that he could even climb up to it while carrying a dead body on his back. Incidentally, they ended up finding a total of 43 bodies in there. But the part that truly shocked Zack and I wasn't the number of bodies, Patty. What? It was the fact that over the six months from the first murder to when the case was solved, that whole time, the townspeople had been drinking the water. Agent York, look, I think we can climb up from there. Let's go. But Patty, I was just getting to the good part. So this is our town. Looking down on it from here, it's hard to imagine any bad stuff ever happened at all. Listen carefully, Patricia. You just leave Melvin to me. I promise I'll take care of things. You're grown up. You're more of an adult than anyone else in this town, I guarantee it. 
But that doesn't mean you have to suffer through everything without ever saying a word about it. Just remember that, okay? Zack, it looks like the Holy Allah hasn't been sucking up water properly. No wonder the shower in our hotel room felt so weak. Patty, who manages this water tower? This is Lucare. You should know the answer to that by now. The Clarksons. Judging from their current situation, I don't think they'll be able to give us a timely response. Yeah. Do you know where the water comes from? Probably Isaac Lake. That settles it. Let's fill the Holy Allah and solve this problem ourselves. I knew you were going to say that, Agent York. Isaac Lake? That's the name of the former head of the Clarkson family. When he retired, they built this lake to commemorate his career. That's why it's called Isaac Lake. They wanted people to remember the power of the Clarkson family every time they used their water, huh? You sure don't miss a beat. The water level's higher than I expected. They probably haven't been out here to check on it since Lise was murdered. I bet that's where the water gets sucked up into the water tower. Mr. Alligator. Never thought I'd have to use you to fight a real alligator. Just what does that skeletal gentleman have in mind for us, Zack?
Open the door, Patty! <laughs> now, Patty!
Uh. Uh. <sighs> okay, Zach. Let's head back to the Holy Allah. We need to confirm with our own eyes that we've completed the skeletal gentleman's oracle. Zack, the Holy Allah is filling up. Looks like we'll be able to take a warm, invigorating shower tonight. Patty, are you okay? Um, no. Not really. Worried about your parents? Well, of course I am. My mom is sick, you know. And she got even worse starting about a year ago. She used to be so beautiful, but now she looks like a completely different person. She can't even get up out of her own bed no more. I'm sorry to hear that. I already hurt you once in the past, and now it looks like I've gone and done it again. No, I know Mama's illness ain't your fault, Agent York. It's more about Daddy. He... He what? Nothing. Just forget it. <sighs> hey! Y'all get down from there, right now! I said get down here, goddammit! Hmm. The heir to the Clarkson legacy has come for a sec. And he doesn't sound very composed. You rotten little snakes! 
This is private property, goddammit! Uh, uh, I guess you really do want to... I could arrest you for drunk driving, but I simply haven't got the time. What? What did you say? <clears throat> Ever since you got here, my whole family... <sighs> now they're all dead. <sighs> You're Satan. <clears throat> You came here to destroy the Clarksons. You destroyed them. Satan. Satan? Not quite, Daniel. I'm just an agent carrying out a mission in accordance with federal law. On the contrary, I came to put a stop to all these problems. You might even consider thanking me for it. Federal law. <laughs> Mission accordance. <laughs> Do you hear that? Bastard wants me to thank him. <laughs> I, I lost everything. My treasure. <laughs> At least my old baby girl. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do now. You reap what you sow. God damn it. <laughs> Whether you like it or not, you're the new heir to the Clarkson legacy. You could rebuild their empire or resign it to the ravages of time. Do whatever you like. But you'll no longer be able to borrow a certain someone's power and march around like you own this town. You need to accept that and prepare to survive. <sighs> Zack, it's no use. The skeletal gentleman is a strict one, that's for sure. We're going to have to figure out what the giant lady's finger is if we want to continue on with this oracle. Lady's finger. Lady's finger. I'm at a loss, Zack. The only thing that comes to mind is a certain lady in glasses who displayed her middle finger to a truck driver. The student driver who was driving the car that Leslie Nielsen jumped into in order to chase down a criminal. 1988, directed by David Zucker, The Naked Gun. That car chase was terrific. It felt like we were watching one of our own car chases from the real world. That director must have gotten some advice from actual police officers. Otherwise, there's no way he would have been able to film such a realistic chase. Hey, Agent York, can I say something? If you're looking for ladies' fingers, you know that's another name for okra, right? Another name for okra? 
Yeah, okra's pretty common here in Louisiana, so most people know about its other name. Huh. Okra. My talented assistant strikes again. You solved the oracle instead of me. Let's hurry over to the okra farm at once then. And find the biggest piece of okra while we're at it. Hey, Agent York. The key word is giant, so it must be rather large. I'll bet it looks positively grotesque, Zack. And just imagine the stickiness. Oof. I think I'll refrain from taking a bite. Hey, Agent York! Our town doesn't have an okra farm. No? Okra farm? Relax. Just follow me. I reckon I know where we're supposed to go.
is the giant lady's finger, Okra Boy. He's kind of like the town mascot. Okra Boy. You're right. No matter how you look at him, he really is a giant lady's finger. But Patty, there's no okra farm in this town, is there? That's right. Then why did they choose okra for the town mascot? Good question. He's been here for as long as I can remember. Daddy said he remembers Okra Boy being around when he was a kid, too. The plot thickens. Hmm. Zack, doesn't it look like he's pointing at something? Let's follow that white glove. Patty, that's it. By the way, Patty, what do you usually do when you're at home? Is this an interrogation? Oh no. I just figured that since we're working together now, it'd be a good idea to learn a little more about you. Should an adult male like you really be asking a little girl this kind of question? I feel like I heard a story about this sort of thing on the news once. There's a time and a place for everything. You know exactly who I am, and I've also introduced myself to your father. Besides, you're the one who said you wanted to come with me. 